It's another Mate here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. And this time, we're talking about evaluating piecewise function. First, let's try to define what is piecewise function. When you say piecewise function, this is a function, a type of function in which it is composed of two or more sub-functions with a specified domain. So, meaning to say, you will be seeing not only one function, but it will be more than one function inside one single function. So, let's try to have an example first. First example here is f of x that is equal to x minus 2 if x is greater than 5, x squared plus 3x minus 1 if x is less than 5, and 6 if x is equal to 5. So as you've noticed there, this is an example of piecewise function because you've got there more than two functions on it. So the first one here is this function, x minus 2, that's the first function. And then you also have another function. You've got x squared plus 3x minus 1. And the third function is 6. So notice there are 3. So if you try to look at that on the left side here, there are um, three domains specified. So the first one, it is with x greater than 5 meaning to say that the input values there or the members of the set of your x values are the numbers that are greater than 5. So what are those numbers? Those numbers are 6. So we have to enclose this one in a set because this is supposed to be the domain. So since 5 there or the x there is greater than 5, so we do not include 5, but you can also include there um, 5.1, 5.2, and so on. So those are the things. But um, you can actually write it there, but allow me to write the numbers, the big or the real numbers. What I mean is whole numbers. Let me just have that one. So whole numbers. So we have 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm listing down. Let me just have not the set, but list it down so that you will be familiar with what are the possible numbers on it. Now, if I'm going to write the domain here, the domain here will be um, your set of interval from 5 until positive infinity. Because it says there, x is greater than 5. So you have to look back on writing interval notation and then also with the listing method you have to also consider learning your um, inequality symbols and how you interpret that one before you go into understanding piecewise function. Now Moving on, we examine our specific domain on the second function. We've got there x less than 5. That would simply mean that the numbers that are in here will be not including our 5, but considering what is on the left side of it. So the numbers are, you can have their um, negative infinity, dot, 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 until you have your um, 4.9, something like that. So if I'm going to list it down, I may have here negative 2, and then I have negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until 4.9999. So those are the domains of, or the, the set of your x values that are possible on the second function. So if I'm going to write the domain here in a set interval notation or an interval notation, then that would simply mean that I have here negative infinity and then up to my number 5. But since number 5 here is not included, so I'll be using parentheses. Now next, we go for our um, third domain. It says there x is equal to 5. So that, that would simply mean that if I'm going to list down the domain there, that is only with the number 5. 
no more, no less. So, writing that domain here, that would simply mean that our x is only equal to 5 or I may list down that number 5 in there. So, that's your domain. Now, let's go to how you evaluate piecewise function. Now, evaluating piecewise function is a bit complicated if you try to imagine evaluating function itself. It's a bit complicated because you will not be inputting. When you say evaluating, you are to input your input variable value in there right away to dot function. You're not going to do it like that. First thing is, you have to be familiar with what value is assigned to dot as the input value. So we have here 2 as our input value. That means to say, this number 2 here will be replacing our x in the function. But what is that function? Take note, there are three functions inside your piecewise function. We have the first one, the second one, and the third one. So which among those three are you going to change that value with your x? So that's your question and that's your dilemma. Now, how to determine which among those three? Because you cannot say, I'm going to replace every x values inside that piecewise function. That's a no-no. That's wrong. Because what you're actually going to do is to choose only one in which that input value or that value of your x there is included in that set of domain. So meaning, we will be checking first this domain. Which domain is my number 2 included? So that will be your question. First question that will come into your mind if you're evaluating piecewise function. So, which domain is number 2 included? So, if you try to look at the listing there, the first domain there is starting off with, on my list, I'm not saying it's, it's the only number because as I mentioned, you've got also 5.1 included in there and some of those decimal numbers as long as it's greater than 5. So, since that is greater than 5, that means to say this is not on this list on the first one. So our first function there is out of the picture. Next, we go to the second function. Now for the second function, the domain there is x less than 5. Now is my number 2 included in there? If you try to look at the list here, the number 2 is mentioned or listed in there. So that means to say, this is what we are looking for. And what is the function corresponding to that domain is this function. So what we are going to write here is our function that we will be using in replacing that number 2 with your x on that function. Okay? So we have f of x equal to the second function is x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then, that's the start that you are going to replace your x with the number 2. So, f of 2, this is equal to 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 1. And this is equal to 2 squared is 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1. 4 plus 6 is 10 minus 1. That will be equal to uh, 9. Sorry on that one. So we have f of 2. That will be equal to 9. So there you go. That is how you evaluate your piecewise function. Now let's go to another example. So this time this is the same piecewise function that we had a while ago. So we have here f of negative 5. So we will be evaluating that piecewise function base or with an input value equivalent to negative 5. So again, you are going to examine the domain. Which domain is my input value 
included. So we have negative 5. Which domain is it included? Is it on the first domain, second domain, or third domain? So, of course, third domain is out because it only has 5 as the member. But let's try to examine the first one. It says here, x is greater than 5. That means to say we have the number 6, 7, 8. And so, with the numbers in between those numbers are the elements of your domain. So, that means to say this is going to be out of the picture. So, let's try to test out because you cannot jump into conclusion right away that it belongs to the second one unless it is going to be proven that this is really where it belongs to. So, we have the domain x is less than 5. So, if you try to look at that, that domain x is less than 5, that means to say that we are moving towards negative infinity from your 5 there. Why am I saying it's uh, moving towards negative infinity? Because of your sign of your inequality, it's pointing towards the left side. That means to say your movement of the number is going towards the left side. And what is on the left sides are mostly less va lesser in value or the negative values. So that means negative 5 is your input value here. It is right to say that it belongs to the second domain. So that is second function. So again, we have f of x equal to x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then that's the time we replace your x with negative 5. So f of negative 5, that will be equal to negative 5 squared plus 3 times negative 5 minus 1. So simplifying that one, we have negative 5 squared, that's 25, positive. And then we have 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15, and then we have minus 1. So 25 minus 15, that's going to be 10. 10 minus 1, that is still 9. Okay? So we have here 9. Okay. So let's go to the next example. So again, this is the same piecewise function. So I hope you are now equipped with the process or how you do it. So I hope you are now familiar with the process. This is really, really a repetition of process. If you encounter piecewise function, this is how you literally attack or how you literally evaluate functions with piecewise functions. So again, we have f of 5. We are to locate the domain where your phi belongs to. So if you try to look at that one, it doesn't belong here because you've got 5 only. 5 is not included in here. And in this domain as well, 5 is not included. But this one, the third one, it is including 5. So that means to say we've got our function on the third function. So we have f of x equal to 6. This one is a constant function because you've got constant value for your um, output variable. So we have f of 5, that will be equal to 6 because it does not change because it's a constant function. So whatever your x value there is, you've got always the result as the number 6. So that is how you evaluate your piecewise function. And I hope you learned something from me. And please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel. I'll see you on my next video. Have a nice day.